Soaring like a bullet on rails, the Japanese maglev blurs the lines between science and fiction. But have you ever wondered what makes the mechanical wonder tick? Hop in on a tour to find out, but don't forget to put on your seatbelts, you're in for a ride like never before. The name maglev is an abbreviation for magnetic levitation, which can be traced back to the pioneer of the technology at the Brookhaven National Laboratory, with James Powell and Gordon of Brookhaven being the first to receive the patent for a magnetically levitated train in the late 1960s. How the idea came about, however, is rather a funny circumstance. You see, James Powell, certainly bored after being stuck in a traffic jam, began to wonder how one could travel faster on land without the cons of ever being in his predicament. And then, it happened. Like a bulb turned on, an idea popped up in his head. The use of superconducting magnets, electromagnets that remain cool in extreme temperatures, to levitate train cars. Using maglev tech, trains can move on an electromagnet guided pathway to regulate stability and velocity. While propulsion and levitation demand no mobile components, the bogies can move relative to the principal vehicle body, a sharp contrast to electric multiple units, which might feature numerous components per bogey. As a result, maglev trains can, in certain instances, offer quieter and smoother rides than conventional trains, presenting the potential for significantly augmented speeds. Maglev Tech has also created multiple speed benchmarks, taking advantage of its capacity for accelerated acceleration and deceleration when compared to traditional trains. The term maglev frequently illustrates an elevated monorail track accompanied by a linear motor, but don't be fooled. Its systems can be either monorail or dual rail configurations, like the SC Maglev MLX01, which uses a trench-style track. Speaking of which, Japan operates two independently developed maglev trains, one is called HSST by Japan Airlines, while the other is known as the SC Maglev, controlled by the Central Japan Railway Company. Maglev trains are one of the rarest technologies constructed and operated in the deep ends of Japan. With the power of superconducting magnetic fields, the maglev train floats smoothly without friction just 10 cm above the tracks without wheels while moving along at a high speed of over 500 km per hour without any physical contact on the tracks, they can also operate efficiently in any weather circumstances, and the best part is they run on low maintenance cost due to less moving parts and lower friction. But where did it all begin? The development of the SC maglev train started in 1969. In 1972, after so many trials, the first successful SC Maglev test run happened on a short track at Japanese National Railways, Jr., Railway Technical Research Institute. Later, the Maglev train was tested again on the Miyazaki test track, which clocked 517 km per hour in 1979. When the Maglev train was destroyed in a test run accident, a new design was developed in Japan 1987, the Maglev trains were tested at the Okazaki exhibition. Test rides were frequent. It occurred throughout the 1980s before the trains were transferred to longer test tracks about 20 km long in Yamanashi in 1997. The tracks were extended to almost 43 km long, and the world record speed of 603 km per hour for crude trains was set at the Yamanashi test tracks in 2015. Moving on, did you know there are two main types of maglev tech? Firstly, we have electromagnetic suspension. Here, the train levitates by attraction to a ferromagnetic rail, usually made of steel, while electromagnets attached to the train are oriented toward the rail from below. The system is typically arranged on a series of C-shaped arms, with the upper portion of the arm attached to the vehicle and the lower inside edge containing the magnets. Secondly, we have electrodynamic suspension. Here, superconducting electromagnets or strong permanent magnets create a magnetic field, which induces currents in nearby metallic conductors when there is relative movement. This pushes the train toward the designed levitation position on the guideway. A significant advantage of EDS maglev systems is that they are dynamically stable. Changes in the distance between the track and the magnets create strong forces to return the system to its original position. However, Japan chose to use a different approach. A system with a more significant gap of 10 cm between the train and the track is also 8 times stronger and better than that of the Shanghai electromagnetic suspension train while still providing a stable levitation method, which is essential in the earthquake-prone region. In this approach by Japan, the magnets built into the train interact with the passive coils on the tracks. As the train moves over these tracks, it generates a changing magnetic field, which brings about the opposing field that makes the train float. When the train is in a constant state, there will be no changes in the magnetic field. 
This dynamic only happens when the train is moving very fast, and the train also has wheels that appear when the train slows down and goes back in when the train reaches 100 km per hour. The train also includes an air brake feature that can effectively slow down the train at a high speed. To be able to achieve this stable approach, the north and south poles are placed vertically on the sides of the track. The magnets are gotten from the coils of wire placed in a figure 8 pattern. The south pole points upwards on one side, and the north pole points upwards on the other. If the train tries to move off the grid of the track, the coils repel against each other and generate a strong magnetic field to push the train back to the track center. These coils placed on each side of the train's carriage must be maintained below their critical temperature to ensure the current flow of the train without resistance. The coils are called niobium-titanium coils. They are cooled using helium and also contained in a container that is also cooled using liquid nitrogen. It uses a cool tube refrigerator, which generates sound waves to cool the helium. So many technologies are being used to build this maglev train, many people wonder how much it would cost to build a whole maglev and its station. Well obviously, the maglev train is very different from the traditional high-speed train we all know. It is also one of the rarest technologies constructed in recent years. Definitely, the cost of the maglev won't come cheap. However, while high-speed maglev trains are very expensive to build, these maglev trains are less expensive to maintain and operate than the normal traditional high-speed trains we are all familiar with. The Central Japan Railway, Junior Central, recently announced that the high-speed maglev train connecting Tokyo to Nagoya is estimated to be around $64 billion, an increase of about $14 billion from the initial cost estimate. The increase in the initial cost is due to the cost of building certain complicated segments and the train being higher than expected and, of course, removing excavation and earthquake-proofing measures. The Central Junior Railway also made it known that it made a $2 billion loss due to reduced numbers of passengers caused by the effect of the coronavirus pandemic that happened worldwide. However, the challenges maglev trains face are mostly about cost. While the maglev transportation supply is expensive to run, the maglev trains require a constant infrastructure, including substations and power supplies, they also face the challenge of connecting directly to an existing transportation system. Alongside the cost challenges, the maglev also faces challenges from a lack of market opportunities to build a mainline maglev. The maglev train is a competitor to airplanes, traditional high-speed trains, and other automobile transportation. It is said to be an outgrowth of the scientific community, and scientists do not dominate transportation. According to Blow, he believes that the biggest payoff for maglev lies in connecting cities, but he doubts the technology can enter mainstream transportation technology anytime soon. People are usually curious to know what happens when a power outage or power failure happens when the maglev train travels at a very high speed. When this happens, there's nothing to be afraid or worry about. When a power failure occurs while the train is en route, the levitation force created at high speeds helps to keep the train buoyant in the air as the locomotive begins to slow down rather than merely landing on the tracks. Like they say, every good side has its bad sides. Does the maglev train have its disadvantages? Of course, the maglev also has its own setbacks as the maglev trains cannot run on standard rail like the traditional high-speed trains. The construction cost is also a major setback as it uses superconductors and cryogenic fluids for magnets, is relatively expensive to operate, and consumes high power.